Hi there, so this is going to be a video about pit bull training and common health and um, disobedience and training issues common with American pit bull terriers, not so much um, Staffordshire bull terriers since they are a little bit smaller and their personalities and um, you know, they're just a little bit different than the American Pit Bull Terriers and the American Staffordshire Terriers, which are pretty much the same thing, but the AKC <coughs> and the UKC um, have different standards. So, very quickly I'll touch upon that in case you're interested in knowing about that, as a lot of people have questions about that. The AKC, the American Kennel Club, does not accept American Pit Bull Terriers into their shows and they do not list, they they just don't acknowledge the breed at all. And for that, their reason is that they don't wish to acknowledge anything with the pit, you know, the fighting and all that, which is a little bit unfair and um, that's always been a controversial thing in the pit bull world because in my opinion, it is, you know, another kind of breed discriminatory thing. But anyways, the UKC was created pretty much basically so pit bulls would have a place to be shown because, you know, they are great dogs, they are beautiful, and why shouldn't they be shown just like all other breeds of dogs? So, the AKC has Staffordshire Bull Terriers, which are the smaller guys, they're about 30 maybe 40 pounds at most. They're very small um, and their temperament is a little bit different um, as opposed to the pit bulls that we're used to here in America. Uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier is more common in the United Kingdom because they do not ha allow pit bulls there and other places in Asia and Europe and all over the world as well. <coughs> so the only ones that will be shown in the AKC are American, like I said, Staffies and American Staffordshire Terriers, which usually, um, I'll pull up a picture here on my phone for you guys, but they all pretty much look the same. They have the tan and white, and they're supposed to only come from a specific, like, I'm not going to, I think it was between 10, 20, 30, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me on that, but from a specific, um, genetics and breeds, or not breeds, sorry, I'm getting a little distracted here, trying to look up that picture, you guys get what I mean by that. So, I mean, there's really not too much of a difference between American Staffordshire Terriers and American Pit Bull Terriers are pretty much the same thing, but it was more, I believe, created for um, the AKC. Oh, actually, they do come in. I was wrong. They're not all tan and white, but I, commonly the ones that I am used to seeing are usually tan and white, but there are blue ones. Um, I have a blue nose Stella. This is Stella. She's five years old. She will be five years old in, um, oh geez, a couple days here. So, yeah, she is about to be five. And she is my first purple that I've owned. So I thought I'd show you guys her. Here's a picture of her. That looks so mean. Like, they look, people just make them look so mean. Um,. Just trying to show you guys the AM staffs before I move on. <coughs> I don't want to make this video too long. And of course, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you can obviously leave them in the comments, like I said. Um, I have been to, uh, not the AKC, but I've been to the Golden Gate Kennel Club. And their standards are pretty similar to the AKC meaning that they have only am staffs and staffies there. Sorry guys, this picture is taking forever to load up. But the main reason... Here we go. No, it's not the one I picked. But. 
So these are the AM staffs. They just come from a specific, um, certain gene uh, a certain bloodline, I believe. So that's why the AKC is very, I don't know. Once I learned that about the AKC, I really was not down with that. Because I think it's very discriminatory against these guys. Because, I mean, there's not really a difference, I don't think, at all. Even temperament-wise. Sorry, my webcam is not the best quality. But you can look up American Staffordshire Terrier if you're interested. So, I'm going to talk about pit bull training first. And... Um, if you were wondering what my experience is and who am I to be saying anything, of course, I am not a licensed professional. I'm just giving you guys my tips from personal and both, um, <coughs> working, um, with pit bulls. I have worked, ex not exclusively with pit bulls, but I have worked with dogs exclusively for approximately two or three years <coughs> um, in daycare and dog boarding and as well as training as well. The last place that I worked at was a puppy training place so I have quite a bit um, information. I've always, with her, I really wanted to learn more about different training techniques and things because she is, I'm not going to share your credit, she is not a pain in the ass, but she definitely is, you know, like a kid, you know, you have to take care of them and they, she just, she's not quite, I, I don't want to call her a handful, but she can be at times, I guess that's the way, best way to put it. So, Personally, I have had quite a lot of experience with her. She is dog aggressive. So I guess that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. So, <coughs> Pitbull aggression is completely normal. People forget that they are terriers, American Pitbull Terriers. That's, all of them are, even the Staffordshire Terriers. So, terriers were bred to eliminate vermin and small things like that. So. If your pit bull does go after cats or birds or small animals or smaller dogs even or has aggression towards any animals or dogs really, it is completely normal so don't feel bad. That is something that I struggled with for quite a while because people are really mean especially when they don't understand your dog and you know she, when she was younger she would do these things like her aggression when she would see another dog, she'd rear up and then just start like screeching, kind of like, eh, like crying, sometimes barking. She only does that now. Um, when I it, she only does that now, occasionally, not always. She used to do it to pretty much every single dog she would see, not super bad, but if not, just like cry and pull towards them and be kind of annoying. But with age, she's gotten a lot better. I find that between about one and a half and two to two and a half, they kind of go through that spunky teenager phase, adolescent phase, where they're just kind of <clears throat> still a little crazy and still act like puppies and stuff. So around that age, I had a lot of problems with her. But through that, I was able to, um, you know, I had to be on top of her, and I still do, so that's why I'm making this video, just to help anyone that might be struggling with uh, your pebble. So again, don't feel bad about aggression. You know, I struggled with that a lot because it doesn't feel good because people think that you're a bad person or your dog's a bad dog because they do something aggressive, even if it's getting into a fight. Um, she has her and her sibling, which is two years older than her. Um, they did get in. They did attack a dog. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They jumped out of the car because my the person that was watching them didn't know not to leave. He just wasn't thinking how the windows down. They jumped out and um, bit a, a smaller, like skipper key kind of dog. Um, it had a. a um, 
superficial wound. It wasn't like a really bad puncture wound or anything, thank God, but I sorry about that, excuse me. It's very rude <laughs> that's really rude. I'm feeling embarrassed about that. But I'm only human. So, you know, if your dog is aggressive, the problem with her is um we think something that triggered it was um she got attacked by a German Shepherd when she was a puppy and I think that kind of made her distrusting. A lot of aggression is fear based and you may not think, you know, upset and aggro equals fear, but you know think about like if it were big like tough like wrestler or something but you had fears just like everyone else but you wouldn't want to show that you're like scared and nervous and stuff you know you want to be confident and you know so with her I think most of her aggression is fear based she just doesn't really know it's either excitement or fear based she gets very excited and that's another thing that I'm going to jump into because I'm already 11 minutes into this video she is very excited. That's another issue that I have with her. Even now, we still have an issue with her jumping on people, and she also is an excited um, peer as well. <coughs> so before I go on to another topic, I'm just going to continue on to the aggression. Try and socialize them as much as you can as early as possible. Of course, if you get a rescue or an older dog, you can't do the same things as you were with a puppy but in my personal opinion <coughs> you can um, help rehabilitate a dog at any age whether they're one years old 18 months to 10 years old honestly I truly believe that all dogs can be changed just like a person <coughs> with proper encouragement and training um, you know again there are some dogs that are just born that way and they're not really going to ever change as far as her aggression goes I think it was bred into her to be honest too I'm pretty sure her her dad came from a fighting line because I know she is a blue nose razor's edge and I just have my suspicions that she has that bred into her kind of and that, if you're wondering what I mean by that, I mean selective breeding the more aggressive ones. So then, inappropriate behavior is the next thing I was going to talk about, such as jumping on people, you know, just excitement in general and things like that. Um, this, you know, it can also be chewing, jumping, digging, barking, um all those horrible things that come with, you know, having a dog that, you know, they're their own per they're their own little being, so they do have their minds their own, and some are a little bit more rambunctious and crazy, just like people. So if you're having an issue with any of those things, you just have to just, w off I feel like this is a very obvious statement, but I didn't really think about it as obvious as it may seem until um, I just kind of like said it to myself and was like, okay. It's one of those things that I acknowledged, but I didn't fully understand what I was acknowledging. And, um, you know, these guys are so willing to please. I have worked with tons and tons of breeds. Um, really there are not too many dog breeds that I have not personally worked with if not one-on-one -on -one or in a other environment with other dogs um even some more like rare breeds and stuff I've worked with um so I really do have a lot of experience with all breeds of dogs so don't think that I'm just talking out of my ass and I have no idea what I'm saying of course like I said I'm not a licensed professional this is just my personal opinions and um just trying to help out anyone that needs help with this kind of stuff and this can um you know some of these things 
are kind of just overall dog training tips. Um, some of them are a little more pit bull specific, such as aggression and stuff, of course. But if you are watching this and you don't have a pit bull, um, you can always message me or leave a comment below because I do know so much about other dogs. I love dogs. I've s I just that's my thing is um, learning about them and training and stuff. So before I get it off track. My ADD, I'm going to continue talking about the inappropriate behavior. As far as jumping, with her, um, I've, my boyfriend who got her when she was seven weeks old, or nine weeks, I think, so, somewhere in between that, the time they're, they can leave their mom and it's okay. So he's had her since she was a tiny baby, and then him and I started dating right a month after she turned one. So I've been with her for quite a while. Um, so he taught her to <clears throat> pick up something when she sees someone as a way to greet them and that gives her something to focus on in a, I guess because when she has something in her mouth she will not jump on people. So I think what he did for that was when people would come he would have them ignore her or he would tell her no and then tell her to go get her toy so she always knows go get your toy and she'll get something she'll even grab just like a cup or just something randomly um, just because she just needs that to focus on and it really helps her a lot There's really nothing different, like I was saying, about the difference between pit bull training and, as there would be to any other dog. But because of their muscular build strength, um, there are a little bit of differences, obviously, with other dogs. Um, you'll probably have the best results with positive reinforcement. And that is something a lot of people have are a little confused by. So, say your dog is scared and you're like, it's okay, you know, don't be scared, like comforting them. It is okay to comfort them, but if you comfort them to an excessive amount and baby them in situations where they shouldn't be scared, um, that kind of reinforcement is a no-no in my opinion. Of course, there are certain, cer certain circumstances where your dog has a legit right to be scared, so, you know, comforting them in that situation wouldn't be as bad, in my opinion. But a lot of people I've noticed, a lot of dogs that have issues, um more like issues with people and stuff or other dogs or fears usually come from the owner reinforcing and letting them know that it's okay to be scared or um, even if your dog's like barking or freaking out and you're like it's okay come on even that's kind of reinforcing it in a way in my opinion Mm -hmm. So, by positive reinforcement, you know, use treats, just, and these guys even with, or any breed, honestly, if you just give them a lot of love, that's a, a treat to them as well, if you don't have food handy. Clicker training works great with them, obviously, like, um, reward-based training, like I was saying, works very well, too. Pit bulls are very, very eager to learn and please. So they'll be really happy to work for that reward or t t treat. She knows quite a few tricks. Um, you guys, I have a couple videos up, I think, of her tricks. And she loves doing her tricks because she knows she'll get a reward. And she loves working for it. These guys are so dedicated. And that's why we will fight them is because these guys are so loyal and dedicated that they will do anything for you. They may not be training wise 
exactly what you want, but you do have to understand that, you know, it's a dog. <coughs> so, um, obviously, you don't want to be too aggressive or rough with your dog because that can cause fears or some more anxiety and obviously I don't think any of you would even probably consider that because um, that's not really a common training method and it's not very nice either obviously so for punishment, um, with her, if she's very bad, I will make her submit. Sometimes I will kind of have to push her and kind of pin her into the submission point, but I'm doing that to let her know, yo, you need to stop, let's lay down, calm down, let's start from zero because you are off the chain so that is the most aggressive thing that I'll do with her is kind of like I've had to kind of flip her and pin her when she's getting too out of control or has almost attacked something for no reason um such as my friend's cat you know she was cool with it and then all of a sudden she just kind of snapped because uh, something with the cat did so she gets super excited so I kind of had to get her into the submission point, um, you know, hitting your dog or smacking them really isn't going to get the point across to them, um, if anything, like I said, sometimes it makes them more fearful, so, I would try and do more positive reinforcement versus um, scolding and things like that, but if you do feel that they need to be punished or whatever, you know, what, with her really all I do is I just tell her to sit down or lay down and stay there until I say it's okay. Um, that's been working pretty well for me, just making her sit and things like that. Um, so, let's continue on. Um, so, as far as energy and some of those other negative behaviors, I exercise. Just exercise the hell out of your pit or any breed and you will find that a lot of issues will change and their attitudes will quickly change she's it, I feel like it's just kind of an obvious thing especially for certain breeds working or not you know they're animals they have energy just like people and they need to burn that off and they get bored really easily too and even just being in the house with toys all the time that's not fun like some you know just like people you wouldn't want to sit inside all the time and play with the same things over and over again so these guys are really good at agility and all sorts of um, sports and some if your pit loves to swim that's a great great way to exercise them it's not as harsh on their joints like running on concrete would be so that's great if you have an older dog or a dog with joint problems or dogs susceptible to joint problems, swimming is a great alternative to running. Um, and also these guys need mental stimulation too, um, along with exercise. Because they're, they're I'm people might not think they're very smart, but I'm sure you guys would disagree with that as well. <coughs> Health-wise, um, well, actually, let me f continue with the obedience. Um, oh, actually, I guess I will um, quickly touch upon the health. The hip dysplasia is a serious problem in pit bulls. Um, you know, it's it's there. The rate is pretty high for medium-sized dog. Um, 
and I think it's just because of the way they're built. Um, elbow dysplasia is also another problem, and um, some orthopedic diseases as well. Um, heart disease is becoming more frequent in APBTs, but the most common problem that pit bulls have are skin problems and allergies. Um, and that is itchy skin, and it can even lead to bacterial skin infections, and that, you know, even, I'm, some dogs that I've seen getting rehabilitated have mange too, um, and tumors and cancers can also be a problem too. Um, so, for the skin, blue nose pimples are more likely to have skin issues and that's because of the genetics and breeding they had to do to get them to be the color that they are. Um, so I kind of just, with her allergies, I started eliminating things. So one of them was laundry detergent. Um, you wouldn't think about that, but you know, if your dog's all, you know, your clothes come in contact with your dog, she's on my bedding right now, so that can be one thing, but the most common things are food allergies, and, uh, well, food allergies, actually, I think, are probably the most common with these guys. Usually, um, these guys don't do well with grains or really poor quality dog food, as I don't think any dogs really should be fed poor quality dog food. It's just the same as processed food or fast food for people. It's not <coughs> really good for them. These guys in nature do eat vegetables and berries and probably some grains a little bit as too, but that's not their main diet. Um, you don't need to go as far as doing a raw diet, but definitely um, try a grain-free food or just look for a good brand of dog food. You can do some research on that. She is on natural balance. She does really good for that. And um, I also supplement her with omega fatty acids for her skin and that really helps too. And I also give her pumpkin um, pumpkin, like, I don't get a whole pumpkin, but, you know, canned pumpkin, and that helps, like, with the fiber, it helps her stomach, and it also helps with her skin a little bit, too, I've found. Um, some health problems with these guys are genetic, just like people, some are environmental, just like I mentioned, like, laundry detergent, things like that. Um... So, let's see. As far as aggression towards people, that's very uncommon for the breed. It only really occurs when the dog is mistreated or shy or fearful or, you know, sometimes they're just born that way. Their genetics make them that way. But typically for the breed, it is aggression towards human is not common at all. These guys are big love bugs. Um, and people, there's another misconception about them. They are terriers. They were not bred to be guard dogs. They are considered good guard dogs, but that was not their original purpose and not what they were necessarily bred for. Um, they're not born aggressive, and they don't attack without a reason. Um, so if your pit bull does have aggression towards people, um, obviously if it's not a rescue, if it's just, if your dog's been like that from a puppy, I would definitely seek professional help with that because it is not common for the breed, and there could be, um, a more serious reason behind that as well. Um, let's 
Let's see. I mean, these guys, um, people forget that training them is just as important as walking them and taking them out. And another issue is some dogs like her want to be the alpha, and if they don't see themselves as a member of the pack, um, and if they don't see any members of the pack filling, the role of the alpha dog, then they feel the need to fill it themselves. That's where you start seeing dominant issues, which I had with her. So, in that, I tend to be a little bit more harsh with her. Not aggressive, not physical, but more stern with her and more no taking no shit from her. And letting her know, you know, this is up to me what's going on so in that I kind of became her alpha and she is a lot more submissive and um, a little bit better behaved too since I started doing that but you need to be confident in what you do because just like people they can sense what you're feeling even you know, it's, uh, to me, it's, like, crazy, like, they can, I swear, like, they know what you're thinking, like, they're so good, all dogs are so good at picking up how you're feeling and your emotions and stuff, so, it might be hard if you really can't help feeling that way, but just try and suppress it as much as you can for your dog's sake, because ultimately how you feel and how you're acting is gonna affect them. So you got to be confident in what you do, and if you want to become the pack leader, you got to possess the qualities to fill that role. Um, let's see. Some this this is. A common um, debate topic on pit bulls. Some people say you shouldn't let them sleep in the bed because that shows them that you two are equal, thus eliminating the pack leader position. But I personally do not think so. She does sleep in the bed with us. However, she does not get to pick where she sleeps. She tries to all the time. She will go dead as a rock, dead as a doornail, and I'll have to get her, pick her up sometimes and move her, but in that, I'm letting her know this is not, you know, I ultimately get to choose where I get to sleep and she can work around that. Sometimes I do like to really cuddle with her too, though, so that's why. Um, I'm not going to tell you not to let your dog sleep with you because that would make me a hypocrite, but that is something that some people think it affects their training. Um, and then, as far as if you have other dogs, try and feed the eldest dog or the most well-behaved dogs first. If you have, if they have issues with food, um, aggression, or toy aggression, that's another thing, is possessiveness. Any breeds can have that. These It's not too common with these guys. I haven't seen it too much with these guys. But any dog is kind of... Can be food or toy. Aggressive. So if you're having issues with that. You, I would seek a professional for that. Um, so they, another... Uh, don't use... I... It's another thing is people don't like to use treats as um, bribes and only using them as rewards. So if they're being disobedient, don't use them treats to lure them to obey. Only give them the treats after they've been good and done what you want. Because these guys love working, you know. They're smart and they love to um, have a job to do. So, um... And they're such big snuggle bugs. She's super snuggly. Um, 
So I'm going to wrap this up since it's been a long video. You just got to be consistent with what you do. That was an issue that I have and still have to this day. Um, I also have an issue with family members not being consistent with different training techniques. So you just got to be on top of that. And, um, you know, the best way to cure disobedience is obedience training. And training is the number way to show your dog that you are the leader and you're in control and you're the alpha. Um, so you can definitely look more into that. And like I said, if you have any questions, dog related questions, just leave a comment or you can message me as well. And I'd love to answer your guys' questions because I know I probably left out a lot of stuff, but there's so much to talk about. So thank you so much for watching. So like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.